Minecraft 1.18 has over 400 crafting recipes, but a lot of them are unknown to most players. So for this video, we have 10 more crafting recipes you probably didn't know about. Our first crafting recipe doesn't even need a crafting table, and it is moss carpets. Now moss in Minecraft, when it generates, can spawn in moss carpets and also moss blocks. But if you want just moss carpets, you can actually turn moss blocks into moss carpets, just like this. Put two moss blocks in your crafting table and that will give you three moss carpets, very similar to the recipe for wool carpets. And they're an amazing block because they look very similar to grass. They're awesome for covering up light sources for decorative lighting, or just for making an area look green that maybe is not actually very green underneath the carpet. It. For the next recipe, we travel to the nether, harvest ourselves some nether wart just like this, and also go over here and grab a little bit of nether rack. And both of these are needed for the recipe. We're going to smelt the nether rack into nether bricks. And with nether bricks and our nether wart in a pattern that is either like this, or we can alternate it like this, we make one red nether bricks. Now red nether bricks are quite a cool block, you can turn them into all kinds of variants like stairs, slabs, and walls, and you can kind of see how they compare to normal nether bricks, but it's a really cool block to make out of nether wart, looks quite nice, and has a very cool sort of red glossy look to it. Great for different builds, and if you want that nethery look, just a little bit more red. Blue ice in Minecraft is generally only found in the iceberg biomes, and very occasionally in villages, but overall it's quite a rare block. However, you can actually craft this block. All you need to do is break some standard ice just like this. This is the type that when it's broken, it'll also turn into water, which makes it quite useful. Once we have nine pieces of normal ice, if we put it in the crafting grid just like this, that gives us one piece of packed ice. And if we have nine pieces of packed ice, which you can mine in iceberg biomes and ice spikes, or even just get it from packing standard ice, and we put that into the crafting grid, nine pieces of that, will give us blue ice and so you can actually craft this if you'd like although it does take 81 pieces of normal ice or nine pieces of packed ice if you need a very large amount of blue ice for a project this may be the best way to go to get that soul soil and soul sand in minecraft 1.16 and higher have an amazing ability that you can actually use them to craft a soul torch so this is made with the standard torch recipe with a piece of soul sand or soul soil beneath it like this this gives you soul torches and the exact same amount you would get of normal torches. But the amazing thing is, is that you can actually use iron ingots to be crafted into iron nuggets. Putting these in the crafting grid like this will give you soul lanterns. Now soul lanterns are an amazing decorative item. You can see that they have a very small flickering animation and they're quite pretty overall. They do shed a good amount of light, unlike the soul torches, and can be used to spawn proof if you'd like. And overall, it's just a nice accent to a lot of builds, even maybe something like a dock, as there's such a cool looking light blue flame and such a small lantern, a very beautiful way to decorate different builds. And they're very easily made by making your soul torches with soul sand and soul soil. Also, all soul fire items scare away piglins, so it's good for that as well. For this next recipe, you need to harvest a carrot and a potato, find and kill a rabbit to get yourself a raw rabbit then cook on a furnace a campfire or a smoker your raw rabbit and your potato find and harvest either a red mushroom or a brown mushroom off of the ground or from a large red mushroom then take a bit of wood from a tree put that into the crafting table and craft a bowl in a shape just like this now finally you have all the ingredients for one of the most complicated recipes in the game which is rabbit stew so put in a bowl put in a carrot a baked potato a cooked rabbit and a red or brown mushroom and that will give you a rabbit stew just like this and this is a pretty good food source in the game nothing crazy considering how difficult it is to make but if you want rabbit stew inside of minecraft that's how you make it for this next recipe, you need to find and kill a blaze. So you can go to the nether fortress and get that from a blaze spawner. Then get yourself a blaze rod. And once you have this, craft this into some blaze powder. Travel to a swamp or a slime chunk to find yourself some slimes and get some slime balls. Then with the slime balls and with the blaze powder, you can use these if you're not being killed by some slime. 
you can use both these things to craft some magma cream. In case you don't have any magma cream around, this is helpful if you have a nice way of getting slimes and blaze rods, but not a very good way of getting a large amount of magma cubes. Also, with how infrequently magma cubes can be found and how dangerous they are, this could be a great alternative to get yourself lots of magma cream. If you go up to some beehives that are filled with honey, and you right click on them with some shears to harvest honeycomb from them, and then you go to a crafting table and put this in a 2x2 two two pattern like this, you'll actually get a honeycomb block. Now, although this block has literally no uses, it is a very nice decorative block that when stacked together can be great for walls and all kinds of other things. Plus, I think it looks super cool and it'd be nice for maybe decorating a bee farm or some other thing that would have to do with honeycomb. Also, as a side note, you cannot turn the honeycomb block back into honeycomb, so make sure that you want as many of these as you craft, as this is not a storage option, but just a decorative block, which is quite nice. If you find yourself some magma cream, either by killing magma cubes in the basalt deltas or other nether biomes, or if you get the magma cream by crafting it from the previous recipe that I had in this video, and you get yourself at least four magma creams, then place down your crafting table and put these four magma cream in a 2x2 two two pattern, you can actually craft magma blocks. Now this does seem like a bit of a useless recipe, but if you actually have a magma farm, or just want a whole bunch of magma blocks and don't want to go mining them, and this is a nice alternative way of getting this block, although it is probably a bit easier just to mine them up, it's still good to know of this recipe, as it's certainly useful if you do have a very large magma cube farm. For this recipe, you'll want to smelt some sand into glass, and also mine some nether quartz from the nether, then mine some wood of any type out of maybe a forest or a tree farm, and place down our crafting table. We're gonna craft the wood into slabs, just like this. Then with three slabs, three quartz, and three glass, just like this, that makes us one daylight detector. Now the daylight detector is a very cool redstone component that will detect if it's day or night. You can right click on it to turn it blue. That means it'll detect if it's nighttime. Right clicking on it again will make it go back to the default, which is detecting if it's daytime or not. This is awesome for maybe street lights that'll turn on at night, or maybe something else that'll activate when it switches from day to night. But either way, it's kind of an odd crafting recipe, but it's certainly a good one to know as the ingredients are kind of expensive. So if you need a large amount of it, it's good to get that right with the quartz, the glass, and the birch slabs there. For the final crafting recipe, you'll want to find yourself a piglin and throw out some gold and when trading with piglins there is a small chance that they will give you crying obsidian also you're going to want to mine some glowstone in the nether and with this glowstone dust craft it in a pattern like this into glowstone then with the glowstone grab three glowstone and six crying obsidian that you get from trading with piglins and that will give you one respawn anchor now the respawn anchor is an amazing item that basically it's like a nether bed so if you place it down in the nether then right click on it with glowstone to charge it just like this once it's charged then you can right click on it and that will give you your respawn point as well as the not quite nine lives achievement which means that when we die we will actually respawn right there in the respawn anchor in the nether which is quite an interesting thing to do and we'll try that out right now and now we're going to respawn and you can see that they made that amazing sound and we respawned right here and it'll work for four times since we charged it four times it'll just get lower every time we use it but it's awesome if you want to have a nether base or some other reason to be respawning in the nether. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the first part, 10 recipes you didn't know about in Minecraft 1.18. There's an iCard on the screen right now, and if you click that, you can go to that video and check out those recipes as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press the like button, subscribe, comment, share. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, join the official iCraftMC Discord, and join the official iCraftMC Reddit. I'll see you in the next video, and have a great day. Goodbye!